Hello everyone. Well, imagine having chronic inflammation in your thyroid. Well, over 14 million Americans suffer from Hashimoto's thyroiditis. We are talking about this particular topic with Dr. Reeves, who is one of the leading naturopathic physicians in the United States. Welcome, Dr. Reeves. Thank you so much for having me, Amita. It's good to see you again. Yes, absolutely. So let's just talk about what exactly is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Yeah, so Hashimoto's in a nutshell it, it is really an autoimmune attack on our thyroid gland. And it can happen for various reasons, but basically uh, white blood cells uh, called lymphocytes begin to infiltrate. They begin to build up in the gland and they can be seen and measured and the gland begins to change. So how does the difference between hypo, hyper and, and Hashimoto's? Right, so Hashimoto's is usually hypo, uh, meaning that the uh, thyroid gland is, is um, underperforming, it's, 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 it's underactive. Uh, mm -hmm. But actually Hashimoto's can be either one. It can be hyper or hypo, and oftentimes it's both kind of going a little bit back and forth. Uh, and so it's, it can make it a little tricky. So it, uh, Hashimoto's, when one says Hashimoto's, it, it usually means hypothyroid, but it can, it can mean both. Well, that, that's confusing. So what kind of testing would you do to figure out what's happening then? Yeah, so early on, um, it can actually uh, be happening and we can't find it. Uh, it can't be tested in the blood. Uh, mm -hmm. It may be visible. There may be a little swelling in the gland. It may be a little bit warm. Uh, usually it's asymptomatic. Usually a person doesn't feel it. Mm -hmm. uh, but early on, uh, mm -hmm. we can start to see the white blood cells building up. Uh, mm -hmm. on um, imaging, and then we can all test the blood for mm -hmm. antibodies. Uh, and the two main antibodies we look for are anti-TPO and mm -hmm. anti-TG antibodies. Those are the two main ones, and if those are present, mm -hmm. usually a person has Hashimoto's or the beginnings of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I see. And also the research, when you look at it, it's more common in women than men, right? Is there a specific Indeed. reason for that? You know, people are looking into that right now as we speak, and the, the main reason is that women are more predisposed to autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, why are women more predisposed? And there are many different answers out there, but we're still looking into that. So it, it, this maybe has to do with like hormonal imbalance or of course the women body going through so many different changes across, you know, starting from puberty all the way to menopause. Absolutely. Uh, women are certainly more sensitive to hormone changes in the body based on their biology mm -hmm. and something like the thyroid gland, it affects metabolic function in literally every organ in our body, mm -hmm. including the gut, including the uh, sex uh, glands, including mm -hmm. the lungs, the heart. And so, it's more likely to have an effect on that sex. Sure, sure. You said it's asymptomatic, but some symptoms might be like weight gain or, or something. I mean, how do how does someone know, right? How do we know that this this is happening? Yeah, usually we know once the symptoms begin to show up. And um, Dr. Isabella Wentz, uh, who's a, a pharmacist and has written a great book called Hashimoto's Protocol. It's probably the best-selling book in the world on uh, Hashimoto's, mm -hmm. she describes five different stages of Hashimoto's. Mm -hmm. And it's not until the third stage that we really begin to see it. And so mm -hmm. a person will have constipation, they'll have um, a, a, a slow heart rate, maybe easy weight gain, mm -hmm. uh, fatigue, uh, mm -hmm. depression, anxiety, dry skin, dry hair, mm -hmm. the hair is beginning to fall out. We mm -hmm. begin to see everything kind of slowing down. Mm -hmm. and, and so we look for those symptoms as we're beginning to, to test for Hashimoto's. I see. And those symptoms are also common for, uh, for perimenopause and menopause, right, as well? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's one of the uh, differentials or one thing we're looking for among many uh, mm -hmm. when, um, when ruling things in and out. I see. So let's talk a little bit about the treatments. So, you know, as a naturopathic physician, you're obviously using naturopathic um, medicine and treatments. What is the overall protocol that you use? Yeah, so I don't operate by a protocol myself. I, each person is unique. I use something called the doctrine of individuality. Everyone is going to get a little different plan, a little different treatment, mm -hmm. um, depending on the root causes that are leading to their Hashimoto's uh, thyroiditis. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically, I'm going to use a, a similar approach, though, with everyone. And I'm just going to grab my book here, uh, mm -hmm. The Serpent and the Butterfly, The Seven Laws of Healing. Uh, in it, I have a triangle 
um, of chronic disease. And basically it shows that there are three uh, legs to the stool of disease. We're looking for toxicity, we're looking for deficiency, and then we're also looking at energy and uh, mitochondrial uh, energy to, 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 to decide you know, how much energy does this person have? What's the vitality and how can we get that vitality increased? So basically I'm looking at a person, how are they deficient? Where are they deficient? Mm -hmm. How are they toxic? Where are they toxic? Mm -hmm. And how can we, uh, what's their vitality and how can we help to enhance it so that the body can begin to heal itself? And if we can do those three things, mm -hmm. and there's so many ways to do that, so many therapies, so many modalities, so many supplements and approaches, but mm -hmm. as long as we're moving in that direction with the person, mm -hmm. generally their Hashimoto's will begin to improve and hopefully resolve. Mm. Fascinating, fascinating. Yeah, I know, I've seen your book and I mean, I've read not the whole thing, but I've read quite a bit. It's absolutely fascinating read. Um, talk to us a little bit about the testing part. Do you do some kind of a specific testing to understand you know, what's happening in, uh, like you said, a personalized vision? Right? Yeah, so with Hashimoto's, I mean, we're doing a full thyroid panel and then we're checking for antibodies, particularly TPO and TG. We also might do an anti-TSI, which is a thyroid stimulating a hormone antibody, it's, it's less uh, common, but we'll test that as well. Mm -hmm. And then we're basically looking at the thyroid and then running all the other routine labs. Mm -hmm. as, far, as far as, that'll tell us the degree of Hashimoto's generally. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we couple that with the clinical presentation because the clinical picture is more important than the blood work generally. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, I treat people, I don't treat labs. So I treat people with the labs, not just mm -hmm. the labs. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, that's the basics. But then the, the specialty, you know, we can do uh, complete hormone testing. We can do uh, hair mineral analysis, looking at the hair for uh, metal toxicity. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do a complete uh, stool analysis, looking, looking in the gut to look at the microbiome, looking, at, um, looking for yeast and fungus and bacteria. So basically we can kind of go through all the different systems mm -hmm. depending on the person, depending on their budget, depending on what's really necessary for this person. And then we can begin to um, put together a plan mm -hmm. to address those imbalances. I see. So you talked about the toxins part, right? Is there a, a particular type of, uh, you know, detoxification that, that you use that is better than the other? In my case, no. Um, it, it's going to depend on the person, and it's also going to depend on uh, you know wh where they're toxic. For example, they might have high levels of lead in their blood, mm -hmm. and there are several ways to treat for that. Uh, high mm -hmm. levels of lead in the body can can lead. Mm -hmm. uh, studies show it can lead to Hashimoto's thyroiditis, mm -hmm. and so until we've taken care of that lead. Uh, the Hashimoto's might just be there the whole time. And there are you know, several ways to do that. We can do it through diet. We can do it through digestive bitters. We can do it through things like spirulina. Uh, mm -hmm. And we can also do it through things like IV chelation. So mm -hmm. there's just so many ways. We can also even do it through homeopathy. And mm -hmm. I know a lot of people think homeopathy is uh, not scientific. That's mm -hmm. absolutely the opposite. There's mm -hmm. thousands of studies showing the scientific um, uh, evidence-based, basic, evidential basis for homeopathy, and it works. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and then I was also reading that like a lot of naturopathic doctors are using IV therapies to uh, inject the right nutrients in the body. Is that one of the things that you also recommend? I don't necessarily recommend it unless it's absolutely indicated. I would personally rather optimize the gut to, to be able to absorb nutrients from the food. It's way more cost effective mm -hmm. and um, it's, uh, it's way more effective uh, because the nutrients can then get naturally into the blood without having to bypass uh, mm -hmm. the immune system by going straight into the vein. Correct. And what are your thoughts on supplements? Yeah, so supplements generally, uh, the thyroid needs iodine, it needs selenium, it needs zinc. All three of those nutrients, for example, are required for the thyroid to function. Mm -hmm. uh, selenium and zinc in particular help to activate thyroid hormone. Mm -hmm. And so generally I'm gonna put a patient on um, a good trace mineral product and then perhaps some small amounts of each of those uh, nutrients depending on the person. And also we'll usually test uh, to see uh, you know, to what degree they need it and how much. I see. And uh, what about herbs? Yeah, so herbs, absolutely. And I think, you know, my, my, one of my favorites is digestive bitters. I love uh, gentian and skullcap to kind of get the liver 
upregulated to get the digestive function firing on all cylinders. There are many uh, roads that lead to Rome. There are so many paths to get there. Everyone has their favorite. It's not so much about the right supplement or herb. It's about the right way of thinking. And, and so every practitioner has a way of getting us there, uh, but there's no one right way. However, mm. yes, herbs are amazing. And I usually will start with some digestive bitters and I might even give a little bit of a tincture that will mm. uh, act on the thyroid gland. Uh, another thing, Amita, is that uh, I will have all of my Hashimoto's patients remove gluten uh, because gluten is shown uh, to, uh, not, to, to cross-react with the thyroid gland. Um, it's because the, the gluten grain contains a protein called gliadin. And that gliadin protein, if you look at it molecularly under a microscope, it has a very similar shape in many regards to the molecular uh, a structure of the thyroid gland. And so when, um, when that gluten uh, breaches the intestinal wall uh, in something called intestinal permeability or leaky gut, mm -hmm. it will in theory end up in the bloodstream and then it will, uh, the, the body will mount an autoimmune attack uh, mm -hmm. or, uh, and then begin to attack itself mm -hmm. while it's trying to deal with the gliadin that's in the blood. Mm. And then what about dairy and sugar? Yes, absolutely. Uh, particularly cane sugar, uh, processed sugar uh, is highly inflammatory. We try to get that out of the diet. And then dairy, everyone's a little different. And I specialize in a, a food intolerance evaluation that does look at whether a person uh, can, can handle dairy. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't generally jump to, well, let's get dairy out of your diet. Mm -hmm. I usually will test for that first uh, because a lot of people can eat dairy. And then I'll, I'll, I'll allow them to have, you know, grass or I'll, I'll suggest grass fed butter and uh, grass fed uh, dairy products. Sure, sure. So what, how would you summarize? Like, it, I think uh, Hashimoto is more prevalent amongst uh, middle aged women. That's at least the data I was looking at. So what should the middle aged women be watching out for uh, when, uh, you know, as far as not developing Hashimoto's? Yeah, um, right. So it, it, it really, um, it, it really depends. Uh, you know, the studies show that it's it's really a genetic susceptibility as well as an environmental susceptibility. Mm -hmm. And so, if a person has uh, genes called DQ1, DQ2, and DQ3, they're much more likely to have Hashimoto's. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't necessarily recommend testing for that, uh, but sometimes we do test for it, particularly if there's a, a family history of something like celiac disease, mm -hmm. uh, because people with DQ1, DQ2, and DQ3 are much likely to much more likely to be gluten intolerant and then potentially have celiac disease. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I say look out for the signs and symptoms of Hashimoto's. If there's thyroid disease in the family, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one should definitely work with a naturopathic doctor or a functional mm -hmm. medicine doctor, integrated medicine doctor mm -hmm. uh, to, to work it up. Mm -hmm. And then uh, by, by addressing the triangle of, of chronic disease, by reducing toxicity in one's life and um, by, uh, making sure one is, is not deficient in key nutrients, mm -hmm. it's much less likely that Hashimoto's will happen. Uh, so it's, it's um, if one can do those things, Hashimoto's is highly unlikely to mm -hmm. occur, although it certainly can happen. Mm -hmm. And in, like I said, in many cases it's mm -hmm. happening, but a person does not symptomatically feel it or notice it or even know it's happening until mm -hmm. it's maybe a little bit too late or until those symptoms start to show up. Mm -hmm. And all of those symptoms are the classic signs and symptoms of, of hypothyroidism, you know, mm -hmm. weight gain, fatigue, sluggishness, mental uh, fog, mm -hmm. uh, dry skin, dry hair, everything's kind of slowing down. So I'd say if a person feels like they're kind of things aren't quite right, mm -hmm. they should definitely go and get tested for this. Mm -hmm. And you, they can usually do it through routine testing. So it, they can do it through their insurance. They mm -hmm. don't have to go spend a bunch of money to find mm -hmm. out if they have Hashimoto's. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Reeves, uh, for educating us on Hashimoto's. Um, and always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for having me, Amita. It's, uh, it's a record setting uh, heat here in Portland, Oregon today. It's 111 degrees, so oh my it's God. so hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yes, so, uh, we've been watching the news about that and California is, uh, I think, okay in mid eighties. Uh, so to everyone else, we are bringing you 10 minutes of wellness topics every single day. So invest in yourself, invest in your wellness. That is the message we are trying to bring across every single day with the top experts from the country. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for watching. Bye-bye.